there is a spiritual relationship that stands as channels of communication between divinity and humanity. So, when you hear divinity, God. When you hear humanity, man. So, it means that prayer involves humanity, which is man, and involves divinity, which is God. So, it's a relationship. Not just an ordinary one, but a spiritual relationship. I say it stands as channel of communication. Every time a man wants to communicate with God, the only way you can communicate God is by prayer. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. I say, praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? Amen? Every time a man wants to relate with God, the only place you can relate with God is by prayer. So when you pray, it is a time to have fellowship with your Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether somebody is here. I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After today, somebody will pray. Heaven will hear your voice. Hallelujah. Let's go to number four. I've given three points last Sunday. Number four point. Number four, power is being generated in the place of prayer. Power is being generated in the place of prayer. What do I mean? Every time you want to generate power as a child of God, the only place you can go to and get power is by prayer. The more you pray, the more spiritually strong you become. Anyone who refuses to pray, you become a prey in the hand of the devil. What fuel is to your car, that is what prayer is to your spiritual life. When you see somebody driving a car, the moment there is no fuel, the car begins to jerk. And after a while, the car will stop. Until you fill the tank with fuel again, the vehicle will not be able to move from there. So what fuel is to your car, that is what prayer is to your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. Any day you stop praying, you stop growing spiritually. Amen. Amen. So that is why I say power is being generated in the place of prayer. Take number five. Number five. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. You know, People ask questions. Why is it that we pray and most times when we pray there is no result? Why is it that we pray and most times when we pray there is no answer? Go to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15. I want to read to you Isaiah 1 verse 15. Isaiah 1 15 it says, And when you spread forth your hands I will hide my eyes from you. Ye, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear you. He said, your hands are full of blood. So it means one who is not living a life that is pleasing to God. He's talking about somebody who disobeys the word of God. When you pray, it can hinder your prayer. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are here, somebody shout, I'm here. You are not here. If you are here, shout again, say, I'm here. So that is what I mean when I say number five. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. So there are people that will pray. No matter how they pray, their prayer cannot avail. That is why the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise the Lord. I've seen people, they just finished committing sin now. Now, 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 now. They've entered fasting now. And they want answer to come now. It doesn't work that way. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? I have seen people whom have been to pastors 
And most times, pastor take them to mountain to go and pray. They went to mountain to pray with the pastor, and they prayed there for more than seven days, 10 days, 15, 20, 25 days. And they came down from the mountain, and yet the problem remains. Am I talking to somebody here? And that is where you now hear people using some kind of confusing or complicating language, saying, I, I don't understand. Are you sure that this pastor, God, still answer his prayer? Are you sure that he's a real man of God? How come he's praying for me and I'm not seeing answers? Is somebody here? That somebody prayed for you does not mean you must get answer. The problem is you. Am I talking to somebody here? Prayer is not something you make noise for. Prayer is not something you mandate God that God must answer you. Your character and your lifestyle can determine whether your prayer will avail or not. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah, you now hear people say something like, ah, are you sure that man is a real man of God? Maybe he's not a true man of God. That is why he's praying for me and I'm not seeing answer. If you are judging the pastors who are praying for you that maybe they are not real men of God, what about you? You have to is judge yourself who is too. a follower to a pastor or a prophet or whoever is presiding over your life and at the same time preach to you and you don't listen to the message he preached to you. You are a fake member. In fact, you make the work more difficult for him. Praise God. You make the work more difficult. Then the man is praying and praying for you. And at the same time, you are there doing something else. The man is there fasting and praying for you. Crying to God concerning your problem. You are somewhere in your boyfriend's house. And on Sunday, you come to church. Prophet, I came to see you because of the prayer you are praying for me. How can the prayer work? I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. Yes, I say I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes. I say amen. amen. Are you here? Yes, now pay attention. If you as a Christian, your hands are not clean and you pray, you are just making noise. You will just end up praying and after praying there will be no answer. Are you here? Can I tell you the truth? I say, can I tell you the truth? Okay. He now says, okay, I'm tired of that church. There's another church I hear of. They say that church, they're in there on board now. <laughs> I've seen people like that. When it's time for the program, they'll be the first to go there, sit in front of the chair. Listen, no matter the miracles that is going on there, it does not mean that if you go, you get one. There are people that can only be in a place where miracles are happening, but they themselves, they cannot have one miracle. God look at your heart most times. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible said, they that worship him, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you don't say, ah, look at him, it's like uh, that man of God, it's like uh, he doesn't have oil on his head. It's like there's no power inside of him. You that know how to judge, how is your life like? That's the question. What kind of life are you living? Even the prayer you are praying, how righteous are you? How dedicated are you to the things of God? Am I talking to somebody here? That's the problem. That's the problem. Amen. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. So, when you are a sinner and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, there are many prayers you pray, you will not see answers. Amen. I don't know whether somebody's here. Are you here? Please listen. The place of prayer is not like a club. It's not like a place you just go and just make requests immediately and it's being answered. There are requirements. You must meet up with those requirements for you to get answers. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I think um, some years ago, there was a girl I was praying for and um, gave her prayers and fasting to do. And when she was doing her prayers and fasting, 
I think, if I remember vividly, she went to the house of her boyfriend. Pay attention. She was giving fasting to do. Then she was in her boyfriend's house doing the fasting. So, when it's time to pray, when she's praying, the boyfriend is touching her. Then she tell the boyfriend, wait now. Wait, very soon, 12 go knock. Wait. No rush. 12 go soon knock. <laughs> Are you there? I, I want to tell you why many will be praying and there is no answer. They will just be coming to church making noise. When I say making noise, because your prayer, you are praying, but the prayer is not going anywhere. In the first place, why must prayer be given to you? It's in your boyfriend's house you are going to do the prayer. It shows how unserious you are. Am I talking to somebody? He said, I wait now. Your blood, they hot. Wait. Twelve go soon. Knock. Amen? Amen? And the moment the sister twelve fasting, when it got to twelve o'clock, the boy said, ah, I don't to wait till twelve don't knock. The girl said, I don't go break the fasting. Make I pray now. The boy was there waiting. And when she finished the fast, before the girl will use food to break the fast, the boy used her to break fast. Then after the first breakfast, before they enter the second breakfast. Then they thought, ah, this prayer we are praying is like something is wrong. We are not praying the right way. Then Jesus now said to them, if you want to pray, pray ye after this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So that is where the lost prayer came in. He went to a place, he said, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass. He's trying to make them understand. Anytime you pray and you have not forgiven the person who offended you, even your heavenly father cannot forgive you. Are you there? Yes, there is something you must learn about the lost prayer. You know, a lot of Christians, they read the lost prayer like, um, how will I put it? Just like an article or just like a poem, like something you could read and recite every day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come. That it doesn't work. Jesus did not tell us about the lost prayer for us to be reciting it. No. He's telling us to pick out the points there and make the points to reflect in our own prayer. So if you find thanksgiving there, thanksgiving should be in your prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. Forgiveness should be there. So these are the things that when they are seen in your prayer, your prayer make impact. Are you there? Permit me to say this. Anyone who have an unforgiving spirit, no matter how you pray, there are prayers you can never get results. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are here, somebody say I'm here. If you are here, shout it. Say I am here. Can I go on? I say can I go on? Are you sure somebody is here with me? Okay, let's go to number what now? Number seven. Be ready to push. Write it down. Be ready to push. That's another point I want to give you today. Be ready to push. Praise God. You are not here. I say praise God. Are you here? Be ready to push. To push. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. What it means is that if your prayer must work, point number seven, when you pray and nothing has happened, keep praying until something happens. Push. Pray until something happens. Pray until you get what you are looking for. That is where people make a lot of mistakes. And me, I've prayed for like one year and me, I'm tired, I want to rest. Are you resting? The devil pursuing you, did the devil rest? I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. Someone asked a question, he said, prophet, I said yes, he said, when will somebody stop praying in this life? I told the man, I said, there is no time you can ever stop praying. As long as you are alive, the battle continues. You must keep praying. The Bible said that the devil, he moves like a wounded lion, seeking whom he may devour. Do you, do you know the meaning of a wounded lion? A lion that is angry, that is ready to tear down anything standing on the way. 
And somebody will now say, oh, in fact, I'm tired of prayer. Can I tell you something? As a child of God, prayer should be part of your lifestyle. Are you here? You are not here. Are you sleeping? You see, in this service, you will receive the anointing of prayer. Ah, I didn't hear somebody shout that amen like thunder. Pray until something happens. You pray concerning something and it's like it has not worked. Keep praying. Am I talking to somebody here? If you're here, somebody say here. Pray until you get what you are looking for. Don't be tired. First King chapter 18. First King chapter 18. I want to read verse 41 to 46. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat, drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. This was when Elijah spoke that there's going to be heavy rain in the land. Then verse 41, he said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat, drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. Are you there? So Ahab went up to eat to drink, and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face in between his nails. Look at what happened. Elijah prayed. He prayed and prayed. After he has said to Ahab, go that the rain stop ye not. The Bible say, he, that is Elijah, went to the mountain. He was praying. He prayed until his head came in between his nails. It means he prayed to a level whereby, look at where his head was, under here, facing towards this place. Why? For something he has said to come to pass. Are you there? What did I say? Pray until something. Push. Be ready to push. Be ready to pray until something happens. Look at verse 43. And said to his servant, Go up now. Look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Open up the prayer. I don't know whether you are there. He said, I must have checked or nothing. And he said, go again. How many times? Check your Bible. How many times? Seven times. It means that when Ahab went to check, when he looked the first time, there was no rain. Are you there? You are not here. Pay attention. This is where I want you to get the rema for today. Now he came back to Elijah. He said, prophet, me have gone to check. There is no rain. Prophet was still praying. He said, go back. He went for the second time. Before you know, he came back. Ah, prophet, I've gone for the second time. Oh, there is no rain. Prophet said, oh, yeah, go back. For the third time. He went. He said, oh, prophet, me, I'm tired now. There is no rain. The Bible said, for how many times? There is somebody is going to be. You get to see where you go be by that time. Maybe at the second or third time, the person will be tired. Any place you stop praying, that is where your spiritual movement stop. Did somebody hear me? So it's not something you will say you are tired of. No. After today, anyone here who is weak in prayer, listen to me. I know there are people here some time ago, you could pray more than the way you are praying now. You know why? The enemies have off your candle spiritually. In this service, I pray for somebody. Anywhere they kept your light. In this service, I light it up again. Stand up to shout that amen like a believer. I say stand up and shout that amen like a believer. Every of your spiritual lights, your spiritual candle that the devil have off spiritually, lift your hands up. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. If you shout the loudest amen, receive the fire again. I said receive the fire again. I said receive the fire again. I said receive the fire again. Sit down. Amen. Are you there? Look at that scripture. Verse 43. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. 
And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. How many times? Seven times. Look at verse 44. And it came to pass. Okay. Yes, it came to pass at the seventh time. Are you there? That he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get it down, that the rain stop thee not. Verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with cloud and wind and there was a, a great rain. Are you there? And there was a what? A great rain. It means that the word was fulfilled. Now hear this. There are reasons why you must pray. Every time you are pursuing something or there's something you are looking for, once the devil see it is something that will favor you, the devil will not just close his hands and be looking at you. Are you there? I ask again, are you there? Devil must fight it. Oh, I don't know whether you are even following what I'm saying here. Are, are you following what I'm saying? Anything you know that is good in life that you will ever possess, even if it is God who spoke to you and said, my son, this is what I will do for you. That God have said it does not mean you just go and sleep and cross your hands. The Bible said in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Are you there? Jesus said, but I came that they may have life and have this life more abundantly. So, everything good you want to receive in life will not just come on a platter of gold. There are demons and devils that will fight you to make sure it doesn't come to pass. So, when the battle and the fight come, how can you be able to overcome them? It's by prayer. When you lack spiritual stamina, did somebody hear me? When you lack spiritual stamina, it means in the realm of the spirit, you are not strong enough to stand and fight. When they fight you, they will overpower you. Are you there? If you are there, somebody say, I'm there. If you are there, somebody say, I'm there. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Can somebody shout a louder amen? Everyone that is ready for prayer today, I declare over your life, you will pray, the devil will hear your voice and they will tremble. In the name Take of Jesus. Number eight. Don't envy anyone because they are more successful than you. That's a problem some people have. Don't envy anyone because they are more successful than you. Rather, pray your way in. You see somebody who is succeeding more than you, don't be angry at the person. You see somebody who is progressing more than you, don't be angry at the person. It is not the person that is responsible for your problem. This is the reason why some people, God cannot answer their prayer. God bless somebody with a car, you are angry. God bless somebody with a child, you are angry. God, I have seen people like that. I have seen people that other people's testimony is giving them high blood pressure. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? There are people that can only come to your house to greet you when somebody dies. It's wrong. But when something good that calls for celebration happens, you will never see them. These are the category I'm talking about. Such people, heaven is closed concerning them. Don't envy anyone because of what God has done for them. No, 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 no. Don't envy anyone because they are more successful more than you. Rather, pray your way in. Anything good you see in the life of somebody and you like it and you admire it, say, oh, I thank God for you. The same God that did it for you, let that God do it for me. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. Not to be angry for nothing. If you are angry, because of somebody's progress, then you have made yourself a rebel. Then that person must always be better than you. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. Amen? Someone bought a car and everybody's jubilating. And in your compound, they say, ah, you don't go greet that bros. That bros bought a car. I bet more here what? 
Now private jet he buy. I bet more here what John. Then you that is talking, even ordinary Okada, you don't have. I don't know what I'm talking. Now we know the reason why you are not progressing. Can I tell you something? If you don't celebrate those who are better than you, you can never be better than them. Is somebody here? You must learn to celebrate good things. When you celebrate good things, good things will happen in your life. I don't know whether somebody's here. If you're here, somebody say I'm here. I've seen a woman who, uh, I think the woman was barren for over 15 years. And all of a sudden, God blessed the woman. After blessing the woman, she gave birth to a baby boy. And people in the area say, ah, this woman who have been looking for fruit of the womb for more than 15 years. Kai, it's a big celebration. Oh, let's go and celebrate with her. And um, as they came to celebrate with her, there's one particular lady in the compound who is always moody. Amen? I say amen. The lady is always moody. I've seen people that they don't laugh. Have you seen people like that? Any day they laugh, know that something wrong has happened somewhere. Huh? Ah. Amen. And somebody in the compound said, he said, ah, sister, now what for you? Everybody don't go greet this woman. More than 15 years barrenness. How about now our neighbor now? He get a CB now. Go greet him. Eh, come on, let me hear what. What's he born? Now Jesus he born. Why? 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 Amen. I was in one workshop one day. I overheard some people talking. There was a man they were talking about in the workshop. They said the man doesn't laugh. When you get into his trap, and I said I've said something like that before. If you get into the man's trap, if the man keeps quiet and he didn't talk, know that all is well. But if you get into his trouble, if he laughs, it means eh, you are in trouble. What kind of nonsense is that? So is your smile supposed to be a positive one or a negative one? Are you there? Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Don't envy anybody. Are you there? Don't jealous anybody. Don't envy anybody. Anything you see good in somebody's life, pray that let that God that did it for that person do it for you. Praise the Lord. Did I hear somebody? I say praise the Lord. If you are here, somebody shout, I'm here. The last point, number nine, that is where I will stop. When you pray, always pray with a strong belief and faith. That's one more thing we need to know. There are people that pray, they just pray, but it's not as if they believe before praying. And, Mo, just pray, John. She be pastor preach, they make they pray. Oh, yeah, now make we pray. If you pray like that, you will not see answer. Pray because you know that when you pray, that God will answer you. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 11. Mark 11, verse 24. Mark 11, 24. He said, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, that means anything you desire, when you pray, what did he say? Believe that ye have received them and you shall have them. I don't know whether you are there. If you are there, somebody say I'm there. Is there any time you pray, anything you know, it is what you want. Look at what the Bible said. He said before you pray and you have a desire. He said first of all, believe that what you have prayed for, that God will give it to you. So you have to believe in yourself and also believe in God so that all things will be possible. Fear and doubts are enemies to your prayer. Every time you pray, you have fear, you have doubt. These things are things that are enemy to your prayer. Praise the Lord. Somebody is not here. I say praise the Lord. Pray with a strong faith. Pray with belief. When you have belief and you have faith and you pray, heaven will hear you. Praise the Lord. I'm running off because of time. But hear this. When I say pray with a strong belief and pray with faith, it means that the moment you start praying, don't have this mentality. Hey, how am I sure that my prayer will be answered? No. Let your mentality always be right. 
before you pray, say, I know in the name of Jesus, this problem is gone. Are you there? The woman with the issue of blood, she said in herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know my bleeding will stop. That is faith. That's the reason why the moment she saw Jesus, can I tell you something? Look up. There are many prayers you might pray. Even without you meeting a man of God, you will receive answers. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. Not until a man of God begins to lay hand on your head. No. Your faith. Praise God. You are not here. I say praise God. I say praise God. Your faith. You must believe. The woman with the issue of blood heard finally. She said, if only I can touch, I know my bleeding will stop. When she came, the Bible said, the multitude, thousands of people were moving with Jesus. So, with the kind of crowd that was around Jesus, Jesus can't even know who is touching him and who is not touching him. I don't know if you're getting my point. But mind you, what healed that woman was her faith. A lot of people were in the crowd waiting for Jesus to lay hand on them. Are you there? And begin to declare and begin to settle cases. But that was not with Jesus. The woman, what she said in her house, if only I can touch, I know my bleeding will stop. Now, because of that faith, she left her house. She was not even among the crowd. But she made a personal decision. The moment she came from behind, the Bible says she touched and when she touched, what happened? Huh? Eh? The bleeding what? Stop. Now, pay attention. When the bleeding stopped, do you know what happened? The Bible said Jesus turned and said, somebody touched me. The disciples said, Master, what do you mean? A lot of people have been touching you. What do you mean by, how can we know? But Jesus said, no, I felt it that virtue has gone out of me. Which means, everyone that was touching him that day, Jesus did not feel it. Because they were uncountable. But there is just one person that touched. And he made him to turn and say, somebody touched me. That is a touch with faith. Don't you understand? Are, are you getting my point? That touch was different from every other touch. Because the disciples said to him, Master, can't you see people have been touching you? Jesus said, no, this one is very special. I felt it that power has gone out of me. And the Bible said, the woman, knowing what had happened in her spirit, she came and knelt down. He said, Lord, I'm the one. The woman said, God said to her, oh, great is your faith. He said, oh, great is your faith. Go, for you are healed of that sickness. Am I talking to somebody here? So how come many were touching? Jesus did not talk. But one person among the thousands of people there touched and Jesus turned and said, somebody touch me. Your faith is very important. Somebody's not here. Are you here? Let your faith be at work. Faith is believing in things that have not existed as though they were. So there are certain things that have not happened but you just believe it will work. The woman believed it will work for her. That is why it works for her. Everyone here, as you practice your faith, you will have results. Uh, you did not say better amen. amen. I say as you exercise your faith from today, you will get results. Amen. Stand up and shout that amen like a believer. <laughs> Stand up everybody. Stand up everybody. I'm running off now. Lift your hands above your head. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. There is a prayer you are going to pray now. Lift your hands up. Say, oh Lord my God. I need the fire of prayer. Shout it. I need the fire of prayer. I know some of you will not understand. Look at what I mean. When the fire of prayer comes upon you, if you pray up to one hour, it's like it's only 10 minutes you have prayed. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. But when the fire is not there, if you pray for only 10 minutes, it looks like you have prayed for 7 hours. Lift your hands. Say, oh Lord my God.